Hi, and welcome from Platform 3 at Central Station in Sydney. This video was recorded at the New South Wales Transport Heritage Expo 2022 at Central on Saturday, October 1st. In today's video, we're going to take a tour through one of Sydney's heritage electric trains, Red Rattler Set W3. In this video, we will walk through the full four car length of the set. Historic Electric Traction, or HET for short, is undertaking the restoration and recommissioning of this train for historical tours and special events. The driver's cab was open for anyone to sit in the driver's seat, which is truly special. Here's some footage I took of the driver's seat later when it was less busy. We start our tour in the vestibule area. We can see that the original signs from when this set was in service have been lovingly restored. Each carriage represents a different era of Sydney's train network, as we will see as we walk through. As we enter the first seated area of this single deck carriage, have a look at how high the roof is and how spacious the carriage feels compared to the comparatively cramped quarters of Sydney's modern double deck trains, and even the carriages we'll see in a moment. This carriage has been restored to the condition it would have been in during its final years of service between 1980 and 1993. These seats are all leather and have New South Wales TD stamped into them. Around the train are signs that tell the story of the car's history. You can pause the video to read these if you're interested. As we enter the second vestibule, we can see the first class carriages belonging to a well-known steam engine we will see later. This carriage we are entering now is a Tullock built double deck carriage representing the Public Transport Commission era from 1972 to 1980. It's painted in a striking blue and white livery, which was affectionately referred to as Shirley Blue after the PTC's first commissioner, Philip Shirley. This livery was gradually applied throughout the rolling stock on the Sydney electrified network. However, it was done so fairly haphazardly, resulting in sets often sporting a patchwork of different liveries. As we peek into the bottom deck of the carriage, we see the familiar three and two seat layout that's common today on all of Sydney's electric trains, except for the interurban V sets. I chose to take the high road in the end, Take a look at this interesting seating layout at the far end of the carriage, with two seats facing each other across the stairwell. This clearly didn't last, as it is not seen on Sydney's current fleet, possibly due to the stairwell being quite narrow, which only allows the stairs to be used in one direction at a time. When the Tangaras were introduced, both Ganinan and Comedge's designers spent a lot of time perfecting the stairwell design in order to speed up the disembarkation and reduce dwell times at platforms. This footage here is from an experiment that was carried out by Comenge in the 1980s. Outside of the carriage now, and we can take in the unique livery of this carriage. I wonder why they don't paint trains like this anymore. This carriage is T4801 which one of the signs told me was the first of the Tullock double-deck cars off the production line back in 1964. Note the vents just above the windows are set much wider apart than the ones on the previous carriage, which is just one of the changes made to the design of these carriages during production. As we drop down into the lower deck here, this guy seems to be taking a quiet moment to take in the interior. These sets weren't withdrawn all that long ago, so there are many people exploring the train today who would most likely have travelled on it while it was in revenue service. Just take a look at these old signs and ads. Hmm, now I feel like I need to go and buy some oven cleaner. We spot something here that probably isn't stock fitted. Either that or those engineers in the 1960s were really forward thinking. 
On these seats, we can see the State Rail Authority of New South Wales initials stamped. The SRA was what followed the PTC, operating from July 1980 to December 2003. During this time, all of the cars painted in Shirley Blue were repainted into what was known as Indian Red, which differs from the original Tuscan Red that the cars had when they were originally built in the 1920s and 30s. As we look at these seats, it's amazing to me how familiar, yet dated, the train feels. They did get a lot right when they designed the first double-deck carriages in 1964. The Red Rattlers were originally introduced as single-deck cars only until the introduction of these cars, when it was decided that additional capacity was needed to handle Sydney's rapid population growth. The double-deck cars were mixed into the sets to much success, except that the Rattlers didn't accelerate as well as they originally did with the additional weight of the carriages and passages, proving challenging for the old traction motors. As we travel through the carriage, we get a glimpse of the water gin and the star of the expo, New South Wales Government Railways 38 Class Leader 3801. Just a week prior to this video, 3801 travelled across Sydney Harbour Bridge for the first time ever with the assistance of electric locomotive 8649. The footage of this manoeuvre is truly incredible, particularly the videos of 8649 pushing the train with 3801 in steam through Town Hall and Wynyard's underground platforms. It was an amazing effort from the volunteers and showcased some expert driving from the crew. Do go and check out those videos after this if you can. As we enter the final carriage, we also enter the oldest car on the set. We've changed currencies now too, into pounds, which Australia switched away from on the 14th of February 1966. This is a 1955 car, often referred to as a Sputnik, due to the spot welded construction which bore similarity to the Russian satellite of the same name. A volunteer told me that the set in its current state could not move under its own power as of yet and it was shunted into Central by a locomotive from the XPT depot. In the days after this video was taken, the set was coupled to Comeng set K76 for its return to Flemington. In videos of this unusual manoeuvre, car 3708 can be heard protesting the move due to having a very flat wheel, which limited the train speed considerably. No doubt the folks at HET plan to sort this out before the set will run under its own power. We get our first glimpse of 3801's front from this seat in the vestibule. One thing I noticed the most about this car is that all the graphics appear to pay tribute to the London Underground. In fact, Sydney's City Circle stations were inspired by the Underground, and some platforms sport roundels as tribute to the system. I thought I'd have a go at opening the window, but that's a no-go. These windows are notoriously dangerous, as you can easily fit your body through them, stick your arm out of them, or have them suddenly drop if you didn't set the latch properly. I think HET made the choice to lock them down to stay in Transport New South Wales good books. We are now coming to the end of the walkthrough. 
and we can clearly hear 3801 simmering along as it waits for its turn to leave. We catch sight of one of the CPH rail motors operated by the Rail Motor Society, which is due to leave in about half an hour's time after 3801 has left and after Garrett 6029 has arrived on Platform 2. We've now reached the end of the tour, looking at the S3A end of the set. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.